Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia News Line and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 22nd of October. India's PM Modi in Russia for BRICS summit meets President Putin. Imran Khan's PTI ready for do or die agitation against controversial amendment. And Lankan government rejects presidential committee report on Easter bombings. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday arrived in Russia's cousin to participate in the 16th BRICS summit hosted by Moscow. This is PM Modi's second visit to Russia this year as he travelled to Moscow earlier in July to attend India-Russia annual summit. On Tuesday, PM Modi held a delegation-level meeting with President Vladimir Putin and discussed issues of mutual interest. He reiterated India fully supports the early establishment of peace and stability in the Russia-Ukraine war. PM Modi is also slated to hold separate bilateral meetings with leaders of other members' nation on the sidelines of the summit. Ahead of his arrival, Russia had discharged more than 40 Indian nationals from its military, increasing the count to 85 people who were illegally or otherwise contracted into fighting in the Russian army. Amid escalating tensions, India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar on Monday called out Canada's hypocrisy, saying the license that the Western nation gives its diplomats and the way it treats diplomats of other countries on its soil is totally different. Jay Shankar, during the NDTV World Summit, spoke about the ongoing row with Canada after Ottawa demanded India to remove the diplomatic cover of its High Commissioner, Sanjay Kumar Verma, who was named a person of interest in the murder probe of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Canada's move escalated the row, resulting in both sides expelling diplomats. Jay Shankar also accused Canada of hiding behind freedom of speech when anti-India elements threaten Indian leaders and diplomats on its soil. Canada has alleged that agents of the Indian government were involved in activities targeting South Asian Canadians, especially members of the pro-Khalistani movement. India denies the allegations. Moving on, a day after Pakistan passed its controversial 26th Amendment Bill, jailed former PM Imran Khan's opposition PTI party on Tuesday, vowed to launch a decisive movement against the bill without any fear of consequences. The PTI leadership has called upon a nation to come out on the roads as the judiciary's independence has been threatened by the amendment. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Chief Minister Ali Amin Gandapur said this would be do or die situation as there was no other option for the people. He vowed to take back the amendment whenever the PTI came into power. Senior PTI leaders have also criticised PTI National Party members who voted in favour of the constitutional amendment and have vowed strict action against them. Also known as the Constitutional Package, the bill aims at debilitating the powers of the independent judiciary. The Constitutional Amendment was passed with a two-thirds majority. Meanwhile, a socio-political group in POJK has announced a long march rally this week over the government's failure to provide cheap electricity and flour despite promises. A report. The Joint Awami Action Committee and Alliance of Civil Rights Groups has announced a long march in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir on October 24 to protest the government's failure to fulfil its promise of a cheap electricity agreement. An activist said the trading community is fed up of soaring energy costs and is irked that despite protests in February and May that led the government to assure subsidies on flour and electricity, they are still awaiting any implementation. ये लोग वैसे नहीं आतेजाज कर रहे क्योंकि ये हुकूमत की ओर से बार-बार कहा जा रहा है जनाब कि हमने इनके मुतालबात पूरे कर दिए हैं अब मीडिया के सामने है कि तीन नोटिफिकेशन जारी हुए दो पे जुजवी काम हुआ अशराफिया की बरात पे तो काम ही कुछ ना हुआ इसी तरह जब बिजली को ये डिस्कस करते हैं तो बिजली 5 केवीएस ऊपर जो हमारा कमर्शियल टैरिफ है वो पुराने रेट पे आ रहे हैं इसी तरह 
अब आटे को जब हम लेके चलेंगे तो आटे का जो मैार है वो इन्होंने गिरा दिया आटे की एलोकेशन उन्होंने कम कर दी इसी तरह जो बाकी चार्टर ऑफ डिमांड इन्होंने तस्लीम किया था पाँच फरवरी को हमारे साथ जो एक सर्विस का नोटिफिकेशन जारी हुआ था उनमें से किसी पे भी अमल दरामद नहीं हुआ दी जॉइंट अवामी एक्शन कमेटी है alleging mismanagement and appropriation that has negatively impacted the local population and people across bangladesh have lamented they are unable to meet their daily needs due to soaring inflation and the new government's failure to control prices a report locals in bangladesh say they are increasingly unable to meet their daily needs as rising inflation raises the prices of daily necessities to record highs Owner of an auto spare parts shop, Laik Uzzaman has had to take on a part-time job as an Uber driver with a rental car to supplement his income. He says he is struggling on every step to meet the needs of his family. Yes, that is the reason. Two jobs, one is a job, one is a ride sharing. Two jobs, one is a job, one is a car. Poor of me, our Shankar Sahib is him, him, him. टका According to local reports, green chilies, which used to cost 100 taka per kilogram, now cost 400 taka. ये शब्द के लिए हमारे बास है दरन दो दिन ना मैं खाई थी बर्बाद। ये शब्द के लिए। तो एक उनको तो हमारा ऑन नॉन बाजार कुंता आस्थे। शुरू में तो हम कोटे बारी। तो तो कासा बाजार टाप रखे देखे। Many are blaming the newly formed interim government led by Nobel laureate economist Muhammad Yunus for failing to control the market. Officials have pointed to recent flash floods as a major cause of disruption to the food supply chain due to harvests being ruined. Part of the blame has also been leveled against stockpiler syndicates who are said to create an artificial crisis in the markets. The government will not fully accept the findings of the committee led by retired judge A N J D Alves that investigated the Lucky Easter Dumaan Sunday Dumaan. bombings Sri Lankan foreign minister Vijitha Herat said on Tuesday in a press briefing Herat said the report by the committee was politically motivated and as he highlighted that the committee's main targets were former senior deputy inspector general Ravi Sene Viratne and former CID director Shani Abesekara Both of whom had recently joined the retired police forum of ruling alliance National People's Party, raising objection over the timing. He pointed out that the retired police forum was formed on 9th of June, while the committee was appointed just three days later on 12th of June. He also noted that the committee was scheduled to submit its report by 15th of September, just ahead of the upcoming presidential election. further fueling allegations of political motives behind the probe the 2019 easter bombing has remained central to sri lanka's politics over the years the newly formed disanayake administration has also ordered reinvestigation of the 2019 case that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time tomorrow good night Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.